Hello, welcome to Flower Juice. My name is John McDonald, and today we're going to be making a wreath. And I've got a wreath base here that has like a, a foam back. And our flowers are going to be red roses, these beautiful red carnations. And I've got a really nice little two tone, kind of old fashioned variety feel uh, of a spray carnation. So that's really our flowers. A little highlight is going to be some thistles and maybe a little bit of limonium. But essentially, we're going to make a nice big wreath that is quite floral and that's really going to be the the theme of it is that it's floral. I know that sounds a bit odd but sometimes they can be more it's about the colour or it's about um, the size or whatever. This one we want it to be like a main wreath and I'm just going to add some foliage around the edge I did toy about just putting the, the roses in straight away um, and set them up. But I think generally I always tend to put the foliage in first um, and it's just going to give us the outline that we want to work with. So I want this wreath to be a good size and it's interesting because this was the biggest ring I could find, which is a little bit annoying. But you can always make a small ring look big and you can always make a big ring look small. Depends on how you place your flowers. Um, I used to laugh a little bit when things were always priced by the size of the wreath ring. But the reality is you can, you can make a 14 inch ring look small and uh, you can make a a 12 inch ring look big. So generally a good idea is just to create that base of foliage first. And we're actually going to take a little bit into the centre as well. And this is really just for access it'll be easier to do this at this stage. I do like this conifer, it's got quite nice um, kind of berries on it. And a lot of um, the eucalyptuses and things that you can get now are, are buried versions and it's really nice to have that interest. I do like foliage. I think a lot of you know that it's something that I do like. I just think that foliage gives you a background to your arrangement that you're going to make. It frames the flowers and it also makes them look natural because it's generally unnatural in nature to not have foliage uh, or to have things that are just pure colour. So Putting that in really does just make it feel right for me. But it depends on the situation, it depends on the, the brief that you're working to. So we've got our base that's really now nicely greened. And our main flower is going to be the rose. So we need to work out how we're going to do this. So if I take a short rose, we can have a little talk about how we could do this. So if I want this wreath to be small, I could place all the roses in at this level. So really creating a circle this size. If I want it to feel a little bit bigger, I could just bring them all out a little bit. But if I keep it tall and then bring a, a lower line here, I've basically made this wreath this size. And again, if I wanted to make the whole thing smaller again, I could just bring it in and work down from there so it would feel like it's this size. So it's where you put the emphasis on your main flowers that you're going to create the actual definition of the, the size of the, the wreath. So let's have a wee think here. I think we'll just stick with the base that we've got. And I've counted this that I've got six roses 
as a main area. Now there is a little bit of foliage on the roses and that's good. We can keep that, there's no reason to not include that. But I do want to make sure that the, the petals are good. If you've got any that are marked, it's not necessarily that the rose has got a problem, it could just be more that it's an outer petal. Um, some roses just show more damage than others, to be honest. But our video today is really just to give you an idea of how you can create a wreath. So I think spacing this out gives us our focal flower and then we can work from that. So again, we've got options here. If I, I could do like two roses and make each one into a cluster. And actually let's do that, that would be quite nice. Other alternatives is I could do one in, one out. Um, or I could do it just a little bit lower. I could even come in and do another line if I really want to make that strong there, which is quite nice actually. Yeah. In fact, we could do a low, like a secondary line, but low. There's no rights or wrong, but I think if you're going to make something that is to be a ring, you really want the ring to be seen. And then for our next one, I think we just go out from there. So my way of working when I make a wreath is to think of a, a structure and be consistent with that structure. So that's going to give it a symmetry. It's going to look really nice. Now I need one rose that tried to escape. So we can see we've got a big wreath here, uh, which is looking really good. I want to come in now and add a little bit more foliage just up into the actual design. And this is going to give us a little bit of body. When I first started with floristry, uh, the wreath was really the most popular design that we did for funeral work. And um, we did a lot of them. And in a way, it's actually been, um, it's suffered by its own popularity that people now see it as a little bit old fashioned. But a wreath is actually a beautiful item for a funeral. Um, it represents a never ending circle And it really is a nice item to have. It's funny, years ago I uh, did an American wedding or where I lived in Scotland, there was a second generation family that lived in America that had originally come from the village next door. And uh, she came to get married in the church and she, her theme was rings. So she wanted rings of flowers. So rings of flowers on the gate of the church, rings of flowers in the church, rings. And yet for us locally, people looked and said they're wreaths, but we kind of are slightly limiting ourselves by thinking that anything round is a wreath, when actually it is a ring. And the ring has just as much significance for other occasions than it might do for sad occasions. 
Right, so we've got our bulk of our foliage in, we've got the bulk of our uh, roses in, and now I want to come in with these beautiful carnations. Because these are quite big, again I want to keep with that consistency of placement. So we've gone with the low rows and we're coming in with the carnation up high. So that is consistent and then what we can do is we can actually do the same thing on the inside. And so where the high one was, we can come A number of years ago, I was on holiday in Mallorca and there's a flower market in Mallorca. And I was very interested to see uh, the people working there and how they did things. And um, what they tended to do when they were making a wreath was they would make a big twiggy base and then they would thread in all their foliage material. And then they would actually just thread in the flowers. Uh, so they didn't use a foam base, but the advantage of that is that they can make it any size that they want, that it's better for the environment. Um, and it was completely bespoke. It was absolutely beautiful. Just adding a little bit of salal, it's again giving us a slight change in texture of the foliage, a little contrast to all that pine which is quite nice. So yes, if, you, if you're worried about the environment or you're interested in looking at different bases for your funeral flowers or for making a wreath, then there are lots of options. You can use straw, you can use moss, you can make a twigged version. Um, you can really you don't have to go down the commercial road necessarily. It just depends on your circumstances, the circumstances that you need the design for. I think that Salal really is a, a nice touch of green with that red rose. Now. So we've got our ring of roses. We've got our outer ring of roses. We've also complemented that with our beautiful carnations. I do have some thistles that I would like to add. And I don't necessarily need to be so strict now because this is really our structure. So anything I add now can just really go in where it's needed rather than it must be one, two, three, four, five, six. But we could still do that as well. I don't think these foam base wreath bases give you a lot of um, foam to work with or a lot of base to work with. So I'm slightly inclined not to overload it. But I suppose the, the benefit of it being slightly limited in um, size is that ultimately you don't actually have physical weight of a lot of foam which is a it can be a problem as well so our last little flower i really thought this was going to just lighten the whole design these little carnations and the two-tone is a little bit unusual but we've got the dark clove, we've got the bright red of the rose, and now we're going to the two-tone, which is taking it in a different angle. It complements it because we've essentially got roses and carnations as our main theme anyway. Um, so it doesn't look out of place, 
And I think really that gives it a lift that we weren't really getting with these dark colours. So the little spray carnations are just perfect for helping to defi define the outer edge, um, to fill in any little gaps. Just be careful you don't have any that are broken. And they're actually a nice little flower. Carnations sometimes get a little bit of a bad run, but it's such an interesting plant. There's such amazing colours that you can get now. Um, but even as a plant, I've seen trailing carnations uh, you can use in hanging baskets. So it is a useful flower. As you can see, making a, an item like this does take time. The more elements that you're going to add, or the more individual stems, the more individual flowers, then obviously the longer it's going to take. And it all depends on your budget, the size you want it to be, the flowers you can get, the flowers that you use. If We might have had a rose here that had a smaller head, so then the thing might have looked more um, foliage, might have come across a bit stronger. But we did want this to be a floral wreath, as opposed to one that was more just kind of a mix. I don't really want to waste any of these wee buds. They're really... The little buds you can use, well, you've paid for them anyway, but you can use to add like little highlight, little um, points of interest into your design. And just to finish then, I've got a little bit of limonium and that will just add another little element of texture. This is quite good having the turntable. Turntable is really handy for working, especially if you were making a lot of this type of item regularly, then a turntable is a good thing. We get asked a lot, where do you get them? Well, you can buy them in Ikea. <laughs> uh, this one was actually made by someone. Um, a friend of mine who demonstrated used this for a long time. And when they stopped demonstrating, they basically gave me the opportunity to, to get it, which was great. Um, what's good about this turntable is it's a good size. Sometimes um, I do have a smaller one. It just depends on what you're going to be making. Sometimes you need a bigger one, sometimes you need a smaller one. But the wider one is good for holding containers. Sometimes it's the container that is the issue for sitting on a small small turntable. So yes, turntables you can get, you can make them or you can buy them. Uh, and I mean, to be honest, nowadays you can buy everything online. The other question we get asked a lot is where do you get your metal stand for, uh, we did a couple of bridal bouquets, uh, shower bouquets, and essentially it's the type of stand you would have had in your science lab at school um, for holding test tubes and holding beakers. And again, you can buy them online. So this is what's great about, see, YouTube or seeing other people doing things is you get ideas and you, you see 
things that you can maybe take away for yourself. Right. So, we've got a wreath. And really, when you step back and you look, the thing that really strikes you is the colour, the fullness, uh, the contrast of colour between the red, the dark red, and then even bringing in this white with the two-tone carnation. So we've got a full-on floral wreath that really would be amazing as a main item um, for a funeral. But then equally, if I was to put a large candle in here or a, a piece of glassware, this could go on a table. It doesn't have to be a wreath, it's just a floral ring of flowers. So I hope you've enjoyed today's video. If you have, then click here to subscribe. If you've enjoyed it and you think your friends might enjoy it, then why not share our video? We would be really glad if you did. And we have new videos every week. We would love you to join us for our next design. Bye for now.